Shortly after finishing my recent video about Grimoire Vice, I wanted to go back on a thought I had about a year ago. Accord is possibly the most important character in the Nier series, which, to be honest, is kind of strange because she has only appeared once across the series in Drakengard 3. For those of you unaware of who she is, Accord is an android that observes singularities and records them to see how things occur within timelines. She serves as the narrator in Drakengard 3, with her first on-screen appearance at the end of Branch A. I should have known this branch would also end like this. Seems like we should have taken a different branch somewhere along the way. It's unknown how many Accord models there are, but Yoko Taro has stated that there's many clones just like how there's a meal copies in Automata. The Accord models are not to interfere with the events they observe, since they are tasked to record the events and send the information back to the Old World, which is where Accord claims to come from. The Old World refers to the Cathedral City seen in Drakengard 3, which is a futuristic city that suddenly appeared in the year 856 AD during an event which was known as the Great Disaster. With it came dragons, watchers, and other worldly creatures to Midgard, but it later became a ghost town in 995 AD by a catastrophic magical upheaval. However, Accord didn't only come from the Old World. She was created in the Kingdom of Night around the year 6230. It's not entirely clear how this occurred, but she was created to record events and prevent the falldown event, which is what would occur if the timelines all disappeared. The Accord models can travel between timelines, and they use telephones to call interventions into other timelines. Yeah, this is kind of convoluted. So sadly, that's all we really know about her origins. It's an entire mystery, and sadly, it's not fully described. It's only mainly mentioned in an interview with Yoko Taro and Yosuke Saito, and when they were asked about Accord's presence across the series, Yoko Taro is quoted as saying, She was always there, in Replicant, watching. She's always there. So if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Her cameos, or lack of appearances, in both Replicant version 1.22 and Automata make sense. Yona seeing a chord doesn't really affect the events of Replicant. Yeah, sure, maybe she could have told her brother about Accord, but that wouldn't really change much since there's probably 16 other Accords out there watching him murder sheep. An Accord not present at the Resistance camp is probably because she's watching 2B picking flowers for 6-0. But jokes aside, Yoko and Saito claim that there's many Accords out there observing and recording various singularities. This opens the door for many stories, and hopefully a new Nier and Drakengard game? Come on, please, hopefully? She was even mentioned on one of the Nier-branded PCs sold in Japan last year. Both the Replicant and Automata PCs have Weapon Story-esque easter eggs written on them. The Replicant ones mention how all the data within them were synced together and sent to the Forest of Myth while the Automata PCs mention how the aliens tried breaching all of the data from the PCs, while Accord sinks some of the data back to the PCs from the past, even jokingly saying that the user needs to expand their storage. But Accord does more than just observe singularities, she also is involved with the weapons across the series. In the novella Accord Weapon Tales, the Accord in Drakengard 3 introduces the reader to her duties as a weapons merchant. The first weapon she shows the reader is a sword that if it's held for too long, the wielder's blood will be drawn into the weapon until their body is unable to move. The weapon story also told of a black-skinned knight who used the sword to claim many victories, but his skin changed to a waxy white. Eventually, his skin became so light it became transparent and no one was even able to see him ever again. At first, Accord didn't believe this. She was jokingly saying that it's kind of silly and doesn't make sense. But then her arm holding the sword started to vanish. Surprised to see it was true, she realized it would not be a good idea to sell weapons that caused the wielder to disappear. 
then saying that she would have to remove the curse within the weapon before she puts it up for sale. It helps us understand why the weapon stories that have curses don't affect the characters in the game. For example, Ancient Overlord, which I've talked about in my first video about weapon stories, the weapon story says that the weapon grants immortality after killing 10,000 people. So seeing how both Nier and 2B aren't affected with it, it's kind of a good thing. Well, to be honest, maybe they could have benefited from its immortality, but that's a different story. Which leads to the biggest mystery about Accord's involvement in Nier reincarnation. Collecting as many weapons as possible, releasing their stories, and having them live on within the cage. But I think topics about the cage would be better discussed in a future video, especially now that we are reaching Reincarnation's third story arc, The People and the World. Hopefully then there can be a clear explanation as to what it is and if Accord really has some involvement with it. That's all I really have to say about Accord. Love her, she's one of my favorites, top tier waifu, robot waifu, whatever y'all want. I don't judge. Take care, and I'll see you soon.